Hi guys, TSM here. So I thought uh, in this video we'd um, take a look at the X1 Brute Fleets. Uh, we all know that um, things are moving on and target progression is happening. We've had the 215 last month, okay, the 225 this month, and then next month will be the last of that set, which will be the 235, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, the damage is obviously uh, creeping up slowly, but obviously then our fleets are increasing in their resistances as well, because obviously we're getting to you through X1 at quite a rapid speed, hopefully. So I was going to go through the build and basically show you why I've uh, I've adjusted my fleet accordingly now that it is at X1, and then we'll go and hit the new 225 target at the same time. So the fleet itself then. So what I've gone for is, um, unlike that uh, most recent uh, Brute TLC, the target is slightly different. Um, the, the Brute TLC obviously was designed for long, uh, lionfish, and uh, this uh, obviously is a different set of targets for the actual brutes themselves. So uh, looking at the flagship, you'll firstly notice, yes, I'm an X1 across the fleet, but you'll notice then that I've actually got a speed crew on. Um, that's simply because I am trying to avoid as many of the red rings as possible. The cost of that then obviously is less building damage. However, I've tested out and um, you can actually still one shot everything you drive past, uh, to, so far anyway. Uh, having a little look at it then, so I'm at 92.7k uh, okay, of damage overall. Okay, I've got a crazy amount of building damage, uh, 1,979, and I've got explosive damage at 788%. So it's, it's quite high, okay? Now, this ship here uh, is a Hyper 30 ship, okay, then, and it's also got a V rocket on as well, which giving you the total combat speed of plus of 20, uh, sorry, 35%, okay? And my combat speed is a crazy 134, and my turn speed is 150. So I don't necessarily need an evade crew because obviously my turn speed is better than my combat speed. Like I said, the idea is to outrun, outrun some of those red rings. That's the goal. Um, so that's the flagship, basically. And notice that I've got all M armors because it seems to be a bit of priority targeting on this ship. Looking at the armor points. And then going back into the fleet again. Looking at the routine ships. Okay, then. And I did manage to squeeze on all, okay, then, knuckle dusters right the way across this uh, hull. Okay, because obviously I've got the speed boost instead of obviously having the building damage, and this thing is much lighter, only 8% total weight. I have managed to keep on damage efficient system, which is giving me that bonus speed again of another 35%. Okay, and this time then, um, I'm at 79, okay then, but I'm a building damage yet again is at 1979, and my explosive damage is 583. Like I said, slight adjustments then to the specials, but the movement is exactly the same, 134, okay, over 150. So that's nice and even. These ones obviously have a mix of uh, 3X and 3M on the plates. And then, uh, so that's that ship there, number two. Okay, and number three is the same. Should be number five is the same. The only one that's different is this one here. Okay, and, um, and that's this one here. We did some testing last week on Hefe Show, obviously, on Battle Pipe's crib, and we moved across from using um, sprints to using MDS3s. And whilst the sprint actually has got a fluky um, sort of score, actually when I come to try and do a consistent score over five targets, it was all over the place and it was averaging out about half an hour for 225. I did exactly the same path, okay, and, and I didn't even use a crew and I managed to half that. In fact, it was less than half. It was ending up around about the 14 minutes mark, which I'm going to try and replicate in a moment. So the only difference on this one here then is I've actually added in the, obviously the countermeasure, which works obviously for this particular ship. Okay then, and I've gone for four MDS three. So that's the only thing I've got that's um, different on the other ships basically. Like I said, crews, you can do several things. Um, best, well, obviously the lower level crews anyway. So you can, if you want to, you can go for building damage. Like I said, I, I was quite content. I managed to get all the buildings on most of them anyway on a single pass if those buildings are being targeted. Um, that's not always the case. The other things you can do, you can go for a splash increase, um, which could be helpful. And the other thing you can go for as well is obviously steel heads. You can go for critical hits because you will get that with uh, rockets. So um, I don't think that benefits you a great deal though personally. And obviously, if you wanted to, you could go for even more evade and, and faster turn speed, but I'm, they're fast enough as far as I'm concerned, so I'm not going to go for that. 
for this instance then we'll, we could probably try i think uh, maybe a splash crew or a building damage crew but i just want to prove that these do have enough building damage so i think what i'm actually going to go for is is probably for damage uh limitation and try to see if we can get something out of the steel heads itself okay it's a 225 uh, target here the new fm1 so we'll hit that now uh, there's a couple of them actually and uh, we'll see how we get on so i generally enter around about the uh, one o'clock to two o'clock position uh, and then i it has an outer area and an inner area i generally go clockwise on the outer outer area and then anti-clockwise on the inner. Okay. So that's all about a start position then. And from there I tried to come down and take out these three three on a single cluster by themselves first. And then go a little bit wider and try and kite these ones here. Generally you can't get the three inner rockets here but you can get the rest of it. That's about normal. It's not worth trying because you, you have to go into these areas here. You can get stuck and then they'll just keep firing at you and keep firing at you. So into this group here, try and get it on one pass if we can. Nice. Same again for this set over here. And we're going to try and cl collect up that last three as, as well if we can in this clockwise route and then clip the fleet okay now we're going to reset ourselves then ready to go anti-clockwise so we're going to try and kite these in one hit if we can and then this will take two, unfortunately, just because there's some bits stuck behind the mountains, which are difficult to get to. And this can be a little bit awkward to do because the uh, the mortars will be firing at me in a second. So I go past, let the mortars fire, and then I go back again. That's better. And it's the mortars that cause you most of the problems in this target, I think. Don't be tempted to turn. Just keep going straight. Now I can turn. It's just that mortar hiding behind that uh, rock there. Hopefully by the time I get to the bottom, the ship's aura will have disappeared. I'm going to go quite far down. There we go. And then I want to target that first ship there. Perfect. I'm going quite high here and then spinning around. Okay, now this will target the three ring. My rings will hit those three rockets and then should hit those first and then take it the sub. That's it completed. Not too bad. Okay, damage according to this then, 76% uh, evaded and 12% resisted. Obviously resisted equals obviously amount of incoming and then how much you resisted. So the lower the resistance level, the better it is, believe it or not. Uh, and then I've got 11% um, resisted, okay, uh, which is a bit too high. It should be down around about six or seven. Total damage then was still about 12, 12 and a half minutes. So not too bad a run, to be honest. That's obviously instant fixing base. So I hope that helps, okay. TSML.